Good morning, everyone. And welcome to this service. Um, the theme of the service today is seeking God in the world and in the Bible. And we're going to start with singing 116, Sing for God's Glory. us pray. O oh Lord, our Father, we thank you that we can come to worship, knowing that you are here with us, even though we are scattered, drawn together through the agency of Zoom, yet we know that you are present as we worship, and you will hear our voice. Lord, it is so wonderful when we think of you and realize that you know us and you work with us even through the problems that we face. That you have given to us technological advances that allow us to meet one with another. That we can come and we can worship and we can bring to you our concerns, knowing that you will hear us. Father, we thank you for all that you have given to us, that despite the problems that we face, we still know that we are, we are covered around with love. We know that others are praying for us, as we pray for them. We know that people are remaining faithful to you and joining together to worship. We come, Lord, asking that you will forgive us for the times when we forget you, when the times are that we worry that you have not the power that we think you have. 
that you are not in charge and that we have to take responsibility and that we have to solve the problems. And you come to us and say, trust in me, for I will carry you through. Lord, help us to trust more fully in you, to recognize your presence with us, that in all that we do and say, we might show your love to others and be with us now and always as we join together in the prayer that you taught us and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We sing the hymn, Break Thou the Bread of Life, number 153. Isaiah 55, 6-11 Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way, and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty 
but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Amen. And then just two verses from Luke 19. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. Now those who know it will recognise that as the end of the passage telling the story of Zacchaeus. Yes? Zacchaeus who climbed up, who climbed up a tree so that he would see Jesus and then took Jesus to his house for tea. And uh, Jesus had a long talk with him and Zacchaeus changed his ways. So Isaiah says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. And Luke says, Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. So um, why do we need to seek God if he's seeking for us? Can't we leave it all up to him? But remember, in the story of Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus first went and climbed a tree because he wanted to see Jesus. He was desperate to see this man that he'd heard about. And it was when he was in the tree that Jesus called him and told him he wanted to go and have tea with him. And while there, he found that seeing Jesus and getting to know Jesus were two totally different things. He came away from that meal with a different relationship and it changed his view of the world and what he had been doing and changed his life. God doesn't play hide and seek with us. It isn't a case of you seek and then I seek. You know the story of the, uh, or if you've got small children, you will, you will know the times when uh, you've gone into a room and you've pretended not to see them. Uh, and you stand there looking around and you say, uh, where's Johnny? And, and Johnny's, where's Johnny? I can't see him. Is he there? Is he... I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Johnny is there in the middle. He just wants us to find him. And God is there in the middle and he wants us to find him too and to get to know him better. Remember, Isaiah wasn't talking to a people who didn't know about God. He wasn't talking to people who didn't believe in God. He was talking to people who had grown up knowing about God, knowing what he'd done for their, their race in the past, knowing that uh, worshipping regularly, knowing their religion. But Isaiah saying to them, come on, you don't know God. Come on, you've got to seek him and you've got to find him. You've got to find the God that loves you and that cares for you. And you've got to live in his way and not in the way that you want. And so too it can be for us. We know about God. We may have read about God in our Bible. But do we know him? And Isaiah is saying, you've got to do a little bit more than just reading about, just hearing about. You've got to seek him and find the God that is there. How do we build up our relationship with God? We were talking about prayer, you know, and talking about having a prayer time. But you don't need to make an appointment with God to pray. We were saying the other day, the number of times you, you say a prayer to God while you're just going about your daily work. You're walking down the lane or in the garden and see the flowers and you say thank you to God. You hear a bird sing and you appreciate the goodness of God. You see someone in need and you ask God to help you as you deal with that need. You don't need to make an appointment. It's good to have a regular time, but don't forget, God is there all the time. So that's why. But where do we look for God? Where are we going to seek him? We were asked that question once at local preacher's training. 
And of course, the first question, the, the first answer that comes is generally, well, I find God in nature. I personally love to sit on the top of a mountain, you know, and, or a hillside and look out. I do miss that in Cambridge, there's not enough hills around, but to look out and see the glory of the countryside and, and feel God's presence. But we also can seek God in our own homes and in our own communities with the people that we love and care for. We can see God in them and find God in the things that we need to do there. Jesus, we know, liked to go into the countryside to pray. We hear about him going out in the early morning onto the hillside and praying there. We see him praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. But he also prayed with his disciples and with the people that he met. Someone reminded us at that training that God isn't just the God of nature. But he's the God of people. Where did Mother Teresa find God? On the streets in Calcutta. Among the people who have needs. Among those who are poor, who are lonely, who are refugees. And among the Zacchaeuses too, the people who think they don't need God and then find that yes, they do. But we also find God in scripture. When we read our Bibles, we see the picture of God, the God that cares and loves for us. We don't just read our Bible for facts. As a child, I loved to read Genesis. That was one of my favorite books because of the stories in it. And I love to read it for the stories. But as you get older, you discover that there is so much more to the Bible than just the story, just the history, just the facts. You look and you find God in what you read. We meet him in the pages. And what we read can change how we see the world and how we see ourselves. How do we read our Bible? It's not always easy. Sometimes people say, well, there's two gods in the Bible, one of the Old Testament and one of the New. Yes, I'm looking at you, Maria. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading the Psalms during the first lockdown because it's, there are so many really good Psalms, so many helpful Psalms, but there are also so many Psalms that make us shudder and think, is this really true? Do we really want to be saying this? And I was reading them and along with a book that... Um, Alison recommended by Bruegel. Not easy, but he has a fascinating, fascinating insights into the Psalms that makes you look at them in a different way. Isaiah says the word of God is fruitful and has purpose. We need to read carefully. We need to look for the meaning behind what's written. John Wesley said, we need to interpret scripture according to the grand truths that are there. Look at the overall picture. See the God that is there for us. God with us. The God shown through Jesus. In the Old Testament, so many of the prophets were telling the people, look for the God of justice and the God of mercy. The God who tells you to look out for the poor people, for those widows, for those that are homeless, for those that are refugees. Take care of the stranger. Justice and mercy, not just worship that meant nothing, but looking for the God that cared for the people that were there. The New Testament reminds us of the immensity of God's love. God loves us so much that he sent his son to show us how great his love was how much he cared for each one of us. The Bible tells us that God is with us all the time, no matter what we do or where we are. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Look at him, look at the words and look behind them for the God that is there. The Bible's not always easy. And sometimes we can read the same passage lots of different times and find a different meaning each time. 
It speaks to us where we are at that time in our lives. And remember, the you doesn't just always mean it, us personally. It sometimes means you in a plural sense. Read it together. Discuss it with others so that together we may find new meanings and new interpretations. For the word of God goes on. It goes from our past into our future and can always show us new things. Let us pray. Living God, thank you for the Bible and for the way you speak to us through it. Thank you for the way that through its pages, we can trace your activity across history, your dealings with your people, your call, guidance, will and mercy. Teach us to read and study the scriptures thoughtfully, eagerly, carefully, prayerfully, seeking within them your guidance for our daily lives. But save us from elevating them into your place from ascribing to them an authority that is yours and yours alone. Grant that our faith may rest finally, not on the written word, but on the word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom you have supremely spoken and continue to speak, and in whose name we pray. Amen. And we sing him 162, the prophet's word. Lord, we pray for your church throughout the world. We pray for those groups of men and women who work, that your love might be shown to those round about them, who work to tell of the good news, 
that God has come to be among his people, that God knows and loves each one of them and each one of us. We thank you for the work of the Methodist Church throughout the world, for those churches who meet together and who pray with us that your work may be done. We thank you for the work of the church in Britain and our districts and circuits and all the men and women who work that your name may be made known and your love be shown. We pray for those who have power and influence in our world, Lord. We think as we pray of that which we have heard on the news and seen in the papers of what is happening in our world and the way in which the leaders are often misusing their power who want to stop people from being free, who want to keep a tight hold on their populations. Lord, and the people who struggle, struggle for a freedom that they hear of and yet find so hard to achieve. Lord, help the leaders to realize that they are chosen to be the servants of their people, to work for their good and not their harm. Be with our own government as it struggles through difficult times to make the right decisions that all may be upheld and all may feel that they are worth, that they have worth that they are all valued in this our society. We think especially, Lord, for those working in the NHS, those who feel that they have struggled so hard and yet are not really valued, those who are looking at whether or not to remain, they may might make the right decisions. And Lord, help us to show where we would like value to be placed, where we would like our money to be spent, how we would like our government to make rules. Help us to learn how to get involved, that our word may be heard. And we pray for the powerless, for those who do not feel that they have any value, those who struggle and yet feel that they're making no way forward, those who have not the basic necessities of life, and do not know if they ever will have them. Those whose lives are short and painful because they are caught up in warfare or struggle for survival. Be with them, we pray, Lord. We pray for those who suffer, those who are sick, those in hospital, and we bring to mind all those that we know and can name before you. Lord, we pray that they might know your hand upon them, even in times of pain. And we pray for those who sorrow the loss of loved ones. Particularly this day, we've heard of the death of Eric, and we pray for Daphne and the family, that they may be upheld by you. Lord, we name others that we know throughout our churches and in our families and among our friends and bring them to you, knowing that you love them all and you will bring your comfort to those who grieve. And we pray, Lord, for ourselves as we seek to be your representatives in the world, for sometimes, Lord, we find it hard to know which way to go. We pray that we might hear you speaking clearly to us as we seek you, as we search among your, the voices we hear in your word and the voices we hear in your world, that we might be directed aright. That we bring all our prayers to you, the spoken, and the unspoken, 
knowing that you hear them all and will answer them. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing in 254, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. as we say the grace join with me the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us all evermore amen thank you everybody <laughs>